For new drivers just getting into the trucking industry, it's an exciting time because freight volumes are moving up. After the pandemic, all these trucking companies are now hiring and it's a good time to decide what type of trucking it is you want to get into. Now by type I mean whether you want to do long or short and part of that is dictated by the type of trailers that you pull, the type of work that you want to do. So let's go over a few of these trailer types and it may help you decide exactly what type of trucking you want to uh, get into. For guys and gals with their own trucks, Cloud Trucks can hook you up with loads from 12 different load boards all through one app. They take 15% of the gross to use their insurance and their authority. They pay COD on proof of delivery. Check them out at cloudtrucks.com. Now for those of you that are interested in doing dry box work, they're typically the most common type of trailer you see on the highway. That's usually what the big mega carriers are running. They're versatile, they can run anywhere in the States. You can always get loads for them, no matter where you are. So they're nice that way. Unfortunately, they tend to pay a little bit less than other types of freight with other types of trailers, but that's not always the case. Our friends at GP Transco run dry box trailers and they pay very well. Something else you've got to realize about dry box trailers is if you're running into grocery chain warehouses, for instance, uh, you may get into some fingerprinting or hand bombing and uh, you may get into a fair bit of waiting time and a lot of that isn't paid either. So just be aware, it's the most common type of trailer out there to pull Generally pays a little less, but probably the easiest type to get into with the least amount of training. The second type of trailer that you'll see are reefer trailers or refrigerated trailers. There's a few advantages to pulling these things. Generally, they're high quality trailers. They're very nicely well built trailers because they haul very expensive freight and they can't afford to lose temperature. So most carriers buy really good reefer equipment. They're nice to pull. They ride well because the stuff that they haul has to ride smoothly. It needs air ride equipment. Reefer freight often just stays in the warm climates. If you prefer to run produce, you'll never have to see a winter if you're pulling a reefer trailer. On the other hand, you've got to be prepared to pull frozen sometimes. And the frozen goes anywhere and frozen goes to grocery warehouses as does produce. So you may again get into having to deal with lumpers and you may again get into having to deal with uh, fingerprinting or hand bombing freight. But generally with reefer freight, that's not so much the case anymore. The grocery chains though, may make you want to break down the pallets and restack them, which is crap, but that's something you need to be prepared with for reefer work. Also, something else you should know if you're considering leasing your own trailer and getting into the reefer business, reefer freight is probably the most crooked type of freight. There are more thieves and crooks involved in reefer work and load brokers than just about any type of trailer work that I can think of. So unless you're hooked up with a really honest carrier, I'd avoid reefer work and I'd avoid doing it on your own. There is tanker work that you can do and you can pull tanker trailers. There are all sorts of different types of tanker trailers. There are chemical tankers, there are food grade tankers, there are gasoline tankers, and all of them pay generally fairly well. Gasoline tankers, not so much. The chemical and the food grade pay well. Sometimes the chemicals can pay really well, but of course that increases with the danger factor of hauling chemicals and, and hazmat. Some guys don't want to do that. Sometimes it's not worth the money. With these chemical or food tankers even, they're straight bore. There's no baffles or compartments. So the loads slop and move back and forth, and that's disconcerting. That takes some getting used to. And there's something else about tankers. Generally half the time you're running home empty because they don't want to mix products on the same trailer. Tankers need to be washed out. It's not unusual for chemical tankers or food grade tankers to be at a washout for a couple days waiting their turn to be cleaned. So there's waiting time involved there. You want to make sure that you're getting paid for that waiting time if they expect you to sit and wait for that trailer. However, all sorts of big tanker companies will just have you drop it there, run and pick up a clean one somewhere else, or sometimes there's a clean one right at the wash. There are dry bulk trailers, 
which resemble tankers, and in this essence they are, but they're a completely different bird altogether. Generally these trailers are shaped like an ice cream cone, so they unload through the bottom and they're wide at the top. That causes those trailers oftentimes to be top heavy, which is a, an unsettling feeling in a corner or in a crosswind, for instance, and they usually require some sort of a compressor to unload. Usually they're pressurized off, and uh, that may be something that the carrier wants you to provide, is to buy the compressor. Don't fall for one of those deals. It's his freight. He can supply the compressor. But uh, dry freight generally, or dry bulk freight, doesn't generally pay too bad. And along with dry bulk freight, it's not always in a tanker. Sometimes it's in a dump box, and sometimes it's in what they call a live bottom. Dump boxes tilt up to offload, and they're generally loaded through the top through a conveyor or something like that. That's nice freight to haul. And uh, the live bottoms are really nice to unload because rather than tip the box and uh, throw off the balance of the truck, and every once in a while those guys tip over because the balance is so high and it's off, it'll tip the truck over. The live bottoms have eliminated that and they just have a walking floor, a big conveyor belt basically, that walks the load off the trailers. Those are very nice to pull. Uh, they're very expensive to maintain, but if it's a company trailer, that's not going to be your problem. There are livestock trailers or cattle trailers or, or bull racks as they're called, and you've all seen those. Generally, this isn't the type of trailer that I would recommend a new guy get into unless he's grown up with that type of thing, grown up on a farm. He's, he's used to cattle and livestock and, and that type of thing. It's, cattle pots are nice because the freight generally walks on and loads itself. The downside is the freight can kick you in the head as it's going up the ramp and cleaning out those trailers can be nasty. Like I say, I, I don't recommend this for just anybody, but for kids that have grown up around livestock, a very, uh, a very viable type of trucking. Long, hard hours, but rewarding work. Finally, there are flatbed trailers, and there are different configurations of these as well. There are, are drop decks, and there are just regular flatbeds. This type of work generally pays pretty well. There's a lot of physical labor involved sometimes if you get into tarping, although some of these trailers now are, are rolling tops, and you've seen those. And those are very nice. They're expensive, of course but they're very nice to operate if you get a carrier that uses that. But one of the downsides of flatbeds is that the, you have trouble finding loads out of just anywhere. They're kind of lane specific in a lot of cases. They're busy out of, out of ports or you know areas where there's lumber or something like this or heavy machinery is made, but you can't get out of just anywhere with a flatbed. And there can be empty miles involved depending on where you unload. There are also some dangers with flatbedding. You've got to get up on the truck and secure the loads and strap them down and guys fall off trailers or hit themselves in the head with the binders as they're trying to ratchet down the load. There can be physical issues involved in that or if you're setting up the racks on the side for a Conestoga wagon. So it's a physical, it's a physical kind of work but right now uh, flatbed work for instance the rates are better than just about anything out there. So if you're a little adventurous and if you're in good shape flatbed work might be what's for you. Finally, you guys may hear about something called hot shot trucking and basically what that is, is is a pickup truck pulling around a little flatbed or a house trailer or something but I don't even consider that trucking so I'm not even going to talk about that. Talking about flatbedding a minute ago I was thinking of a story that I know that a friend of mine went through. Uh, up here in Northern Ontario there is a lot of lumber that's cut and it's flat bedded down to the cities to the lumber yards. And some of those lumber yards stack the loads pretty high because they want to get as much on the trailer as they possibly can. Now I had a friend that was up on top of a load of lumber and he was, he was rolling his tarps. He, he had to cover the load so it wouldn't get wet of course. And it was a windy day and he was spreading out the tarps to spread out over the top of the load. He, he flipped up the tarp a gust of wind caught him, acted like a sail, and he went sailing off the top of this lumber load about 13 and a half feet in the air. It didn't end well. He landed upright on his, on his, on his feet, but broke his legs, broke his hips, and injured his back. And he's never been right ever since. 
So there's one of the dangers of flat bedding right there. Sometimes you don't have any control of what type of load you're putting on, but no matter what you get on the wagon, you've got to deal with it. And if you're tarping a really high load, you sure as hell don't want to fall off. Stay safe, keep the rubber side down, we'll see you on the back. Home.